All right, following on from some of the feedback in the survey that you guys did, um, I want to do a couple more examples. We factorise quadratics uh, that involve a negative term. Now, what I don't mean is something like minus x squared. I'll address that in another video because um, that's sort of a special little case that we deal with. But what I mean is something like this. Uh, x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, well... Straight away, we know that there are, there's no common factor here. That's the first thing you always check. Uh, and we've got three terms. We can't split it up into pairs, so we've got three terms. We're looking for something that adds to give this, adds to give minus 5, and multiplies to give 6. Now, straight away, I look at this and I say, if I have a negative term in the middle, then what it will mean is that... At least one of my numbers is going to have to be negative. Now, how do I know straight away that both of my numbers are going to be negative? Well, again, if I end up with a positive here, if I end up with a negative middle, or a negative x if you'd like, but a positive constant, then I'm going to be dealing with a negative multiplied by a negative. That's just the, the scenario that we are loosely dealing with because what will happen is that we'll end up with a negative multiplying a negative which gives me a positive. So let's try to think of a pair of numbers, both of them being negative, that multiply to give 6 and add to give 5. Well, in this case I think we are dealing with a pair of numbers, uh, minus 3, x minus 3, and x minus 2. You can check, of course, by expanding that if you'd like. Now, what, some, what I noticed some of you were doing um, in our lesson on Wednesday was then going and expanding that and saying x squared uh, minus 2x minus 3x plus 6 equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. And going, well, hold on, I end up with what I started with. Absolutely you will, because all you've done is you've got it to factorised form there, and then you've got it, just got gone and expanded it again, which is not what we want to do. We want to stop here. Once you pick those numbers, you get in a pair of brackets, everything's multiplying one another, you stop there. Okay? Um, so if we are dealing with um, some negative numbers here, we don't approach it any differently, really. Let's have a look at another one. All right, let's have got something like x squared minus 5x minus 14. Okay, let's look at this scenario. It's a little bit different to the last one. We've still got a negative term here in the middle. We've still got a negative x. We still have a negative x, but this time we also have a negative constant. Now, by constant, I'm just using that term. Um, this number here that's by itself is our constant. It's just the number that's off by itself. It means that it has no pronumeral Um associated with it. So it's got no x, it's got no y, no a, b, or whatever. It is just a number off by itself. Now, if we have a negative constant, it means that we are going to have a positive multiplying a negative, because that's how I go about getting a negative number with multiplication. I have to have a positive number multiplying a negative. If I've got two positives, I'd end up with a positive. Two negatives, I'd end up with a positive. So really, if we see this scenario here where I have a negative constant... I know I've got a negative and a positive. Well, my options really are 7 times 2 or 14 times 1. And why don't you have a second to think if you'd like. Pause it here uh, and have a go at it yourself. But if not, I'm going to look at it and say, my numbers really have to be 7 and 2. Okay, now which one will be positive, which one will be negative? If we look at this, our negative term is going to be 7 and our positive will be 2. That's because we end up with minus 5 in the middle. And if we end up with minus 5 in the middle, our bigger number here, the 7, must be negative. Now, if we reverse this scenario, just, com just change the middle term sign, x squared plus 5x minus 14. Same two numbers. Well the same two numbers in, we're going to use 7 and 2, uh, but this time we'd have to have plus 7 and minus 2 because we need the bigger number to be positive, so we get positive 5. Um, really all we're looking at there is saying, if I have a negative constant, 
In fact, I can even cross out this criteria because if it doesn't even matter whether x is negative or positive. If I have a negative constant, I'm going to have a negative number multiplying a positive number. And I hope that helps. And as always, you could just expand to see whether you are correct. Um, be very careful with those negatives, but really our process is no more challenging.